They say hindsight is 2020. It's priceless. And more often you hear the old timers say, if only I knew then what I know now. Well, I thought about it a little bit. And you hear more people today say, what would I tell my younger self? And you know, if I could go back to November 2013 and give my younger self advice, my younger self who is trying to find out what is the best place to live in Costa Rica. Well, I believe I tell my younger self exactly what I'm gonna share with you today. Welcome to another beautiful but slightly windy day in paradise. Indeed, welcome back. It is a beautiful day, but windy, which always messes up my hair. I work so hard on it. But today we are going to be talking about the best places or the best areas to live in Costa Rica. You know, we've lived all over the place. And in the process of creating this video, I realized, wow, there's just a lot of information and I would just not be able to put it all together in one video. And Rebecca really had a great idea. I did. We have lived in five different regions and I thought, why don't we just make a video, you know, five separate videos talking about each region, going into more detail um, and let you know in, within that region, what was the area that we liked the most and what was the area that we liked the least and give you some reasons why, you know, from our perspective, having lived there. Yeah, this way we can kind of go into detail and yeah. share with you from our experience exactly what we felt. Right, and there are a couple of areas that we have not lived in and we're gonna do a sixth video um, letting you know why we haven't lived in those areas. Yes, because while it's probably a nice place to go visit, you probably don't want to live there. Right. All of Costa Rica is beautiful. Absolutely. So we're going to go into detail on those videos, but today we're actually going to give you just a general overview of those five areas, which is going to give you some very valuable information. Also, you're going to want to download the PDF that's in the description below, because in this PDF, I'm going to go into detail on the name of the towns that are in each of those five areas, where it's located in Costa Rica, the approximate population of the people in that area, the altitude, the temperature, so you know the comfort level of, you know, what does it feel like in that area? Is it hot? Is it cold? We're going to talk about the proximity to the border because you'll need to stamp out every 90 days until you become a resident if you decide to stay. The proximity to the coast if you like the beaches. Proximity to the airports. Is there a hospital in that area? And what about shopping? You know, how difficult is it to be able to buy stuff? And also the proximity to schools in the event you decide to come with children. So all of that's going to be very important. Make sure to download that PDF. So I guess we ought to go to the map and actually start looking at those five areas that we've actually lived in. Right, because we've lived in what? 12, 13 houses. 13 different, or 13 houses, 12 different locations all over Costa Rica. Right, we went back to one place twice because we... It, it was so much. nice, we went twice. So we're gonna actually give you more information in coming videos, which is gonna really make it very helpful. So. With that said, let's go ahead and go to the map now to give you an idea, a general idea of those five locations and you can look forward to the other videos coming so you'll have more detailed information. Let's take a look at the five areas we've lived in and give you a general idea as to why. These are great places to live. However, almost any place in Costa Rica is going to be beautiful, but like any other place in the world, Costa Rica has places that might be nice to visit, but I wouldn't suggest living there. Don't forget, you can download the PDF that is full of valuable information about each of these five areas. So let's get started. When you arrive in Costa Rica, you'll probably fly into the San Jose International Airport or the Liberia International Airport. Although we've visited most of Costa Rica and have lived in many different places in Costa Rica, the one small area we haven't lived in is one of the most popular areas for foreigners or the gringos. I'm talking about the area between San Jose and Liberia. 
My guess is many of the people who choose to live in this area choose to do so because it is close to the airport. They enjoy easy access to shopping and entertainment. The upper half of that area has a lot of flat terrain and doesn't quite feel like the mountainous Costa Rica we're used to. However, it's still very beautiful and because this area has a lot of gringos, you'll find lots of tourist activities and access to a lot of amenities that you will not find south of San Jose. Because this is a very touristy area, you can expect most things to cost more, but there is a lot more entertainment, a lot of different things to do. You'll also find many expat communities where you can meet other people who speak your language. And again, because this area has so many English speaking foreigners, you'll find quite a few Ticos that can understand and speak English here than anywhere else in Costa Rica. So while it's helpful to know Spanish, it's much easier to get by day to day here than any other part of Costa Rica if you don't speak the local lingo. So to sum it up, this is a nice place to live. However, you'll see a lot of gringos, flat terrain, access to easy shopping, lots of amenities, but it will be more expensive than anywhere else in Costa Rica. Now, let's go south of this area and start looking at the five areas we've lived. Number one is near the border of Panama. That area is rich with Costa Rican culture. If you choose to live in this area, you'll experience real, raw Costa Rica. From Las Juntas down to San Vito, to the small town of Sabalito, down to Agua Buena, and back up through Linda Vista are great places to live. You will not see many gringos in this area. However, there is a favorite gringo hangout located just before you get to Linda Vista. A restaurant called Cascada del Bosco seems to be a favorite place to eat, enjoy a few drinks, and catch up with a few local gringos that do live in this area. Because there are so few gringos in this area, we were always pleasantly surprised when we did find someone who spoke a little English. This area is what I call raw Costa Rica. There's not really anything for a foreign tourist other than Wilson's Botanical Gardens. While you can find most of what you need shopping in San Vito or Sabalito, you can enjoy much easier and more affordable shopping by traveling about an hour to the border town of Paso Canoas. The border of Panama is a tax-free zone and you'll have access to a much larger variety. Surprisingly, gas and a lot of other things you buy in Panama is about half the price of what you'll pay in Costa Rica. Let's go a bit north to the Paris Zeladon area, which is our second area. From the little town of San Gerardo de Rivers to the main town of Rivers, on to Miravalles, continuing through San Isidro to Palmeiras and following the highway past Tinamaste to the coast are great places to live. That area is often called Paris Zeladon and San Isidro, the second largest and fastest growing city is found within that area. If you choose to live in any of these areas, you're within 30 minutes of lots of restaurants hospitals and clinics with the ability to buy just about anything. Even better, a super Walmart has recently been completed which saves you a ton of time because you can now find just about everything at a one-stop location. This south central area has a good number of gringos However, you still feel the rich Costa Rican culture here without seeing lots and lots of foreigners. While you will find some nice waterfalls and some private wildlife reserves, this area's main tourist attraction is Mount Cheripo, very popular because it is the highest point of Costa Rica. 
a lot of people hike this mountain, but you don't really see these tourists much because they stay in such a remote area of Costa Rica. Tinamaste is a prime location and has a high concentration of gringos because it is about 30 minutes from the coast and 30 minutes from San Isidro. Because of the altitude, proximity to the coast and the city of San Isidro, Tinamaste does cost a little more than the rest of the locations in the Paris Eladon area. Our third area is at the Pacific Coast. From the very popular town of Hako all the way down to Golfito. While there are some beautiful beaches along this area, our favorite beach is in the Estorios area. In my opinion, this area has the most beautiful beaches in all of Costa Rica. When we lived here many times, I would go surfing or we would go run the beach and it felt like we had our own piece of paradise. We seldom saw tourists. All along the beaches of Costa Rica, you'll find lots of things for tourists to do. However, Estorios is a peaceful and quiet place. Uvita, on the other hand, is a very popular place because it has the whale's tail along with actually having the ability to watch whales in this area. Hako is a very popular tourist destination, which makes it a nice place to visit, but I wouldn't want to live there. All the way down to Golfito, which is a fishing community, there you'll be able to get a lot of fresh seafood and enjoy some great fishing. But this place is hotter than most places in Costa Rica, and because it is a fishing community, you can smell the fish in the air. How about we go to the Caribbean coast and visit our fourth area. From the port town of Limon all the way to Manzanillo is our next area. Limon is a very busy port town and does not feel safe at all, but offers some of the shopping you'll need. I would not want to live anywhere near Limon, so let's go south to Coweta. Living in Coweta was amazing. Every day we'd wake up to the sound of howler monkeys and it was fun to sit on the porch watching the sloths and other wildlife. If you're into enjoying nature or spotting wildlife, this place is great and you'll definitely see lots of wildlife at the Coweta National Park. Puerto Viejo is just a few miles away and has a lot of tourists. This is a party town on the beautiful Caribbean coast, but you need to be careful. Every time we'd visit this town to enjoy a good meal or the beach, we would be approached by someone offering to sell us some drugs. Those incidents make this place a bit unsafe in my opinion and not an ideal place to live. But just past Puerto Viejo is Punta Cacos, from Punta Cacos, up Margarita Hill, back down to the end of the road at Manzanillo, and over to Coweta are many great places to live. Just try to avoid living near Puerto Viejo or Limon. This area is still pretty raw and has not been developed much, which means that it is a bit more difficult for shopping. The culture and feel here is night and day different from the rest of Costa Rica. This area has an Afro-Jamaican heritage and a cool Caribbean vibe with the most spectacular ocean colors. Our fifth area is the Nicoya Peninsula. The lower half, or two-thirds of Nicoya, offers many great places to live. However, when you get on the northern side of the city of Nicoya and up towards Tamarindo, the terrain quickly gets flat and we prefer the mountains. That area also has a lot more gringos and a lot of tourist activity. The lower half of Nicoya is less developed and has a lot of interesting places to visit with lots of interesting coastal towns. It's not quite as easy to do shopping here, but you'll find most of what you need without having to travel too far. 
The lower half of the Nicoya Peninsula offers some great places to live with beautiful views of the Pacific on one side and the Gulf on the other. That's an overall look at the five areas we've lived in and the areas we can safely recommend. Next week, we'll give you a detailed breakdown of our favorite area and share with you why you might consider living in that area too. Make sure to like and share this video, download the PDF, and tell us in the comments below. Of the five areas we looked at today, which one right now is your favorite? We'll see you next week.